leave it at that. All right, let's have some fun. Cool, let's do it. So it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out today. I appreciate it. You're most welcome. So I want to begin our conversation before we get into your life as a speaker and an author. How did you survive the last three and a half years? How did you get through the pandemic and how did it subsequently change you? Well, it certainly was a major adaption. So I, I'm the, actually the founder of a company called Speaker Fulfillment Services in town. So product still fulfillment still went on. So the daily operations of the business that I was involved in didn't really change much. Now, certainly there was an impact in terms of volume on certain things and all that, but it was pretty much still day to day. And we had to make some adaptions in terms of, you know, working the work environment a little bit differently in terms of separating people out and all that. But it was pretty much business as usual for the core business that I was involved with. Now, you know, on, on a personal side, it was a major pain in the ass. <laughs> yes. But, you know, you, you know, we, we all had challenges to deal with and we adapt and we overcome. So. Yeah, for sure. So let's get into the heart and soul. You're touching on what you're doing for a living, but if we really wanted to know what you do on a daily basis, I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's career day. And one of the kids is curious and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How would you answer that child? All right. So I actually am involved with a number of things, Joe, but uh, for a third grade class, I would tell them that I am primarily involved in helping coach people who think they have a message they want to share with the world how to build a, an actual speaking business based around their unique message. So taking the 25 years behind the scenes, both with the fulfillment company and handling the backroom sales table at various internet marketing conferences, I kind of had a unique perspective on the industry. So I help people who think they want to speak in front of others learn to do it the right way. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I'm an old fart, Joe. So, you know, I don't know, you know, all, 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 about all I remember of third grade is wiping out one day and ended up with a massive goose egg on my head. Uh-oh. Uh, third grade aspirations. Oh, my gosh. I, I, you know, I, I probably couldn't even do a very good job of telling you what college aspirations were. I mean, it's like, you know, things kind of happen and you know, I just followed the path. But I, was there a lot of forethought into this is how I want to carve out my life and what I want to do? Honestly, no. I mean... I, I When I graduated from college, I decided I wasn't ready to go to work, so I decided to go ahead and get my MBA, so we're going back into the 1980, I mean, way back, and during that time, I, I volunteered when I was in the MBA program to do a research project for a professor, because I thought it would be a good experience, and as it turned out, that particular professor had a connection with a local businessman who, when he found out I was graduating, he had liked the research I'd done. He called me up and asked me if I would come and work for him. And I hadn't really sought out any particular things at that point in time. So I said, sure, I'll, I'll give it a try. And so this guy was running an industrial training company. So he would, he would go out and teach troubleshooting of like electronics and things of that type to like power plants, military bases, et cetera, any kind of maintenance crew or whatever. So my first job was actually going to his house going into his basement, getting on the phone and calling all these facilities and trying to sell high-end training. So my first job out of college was as a telemarketer selling $4,000 training classes, cold call. So it was a baptism by fire, so to speak. So absolutely. Even, even though I don't consider myself a salesperson, I managed to sell some classes and, uh, you know, we grew that company to a few million dollars in size or whatever. So but there was no forethought, Joe, as to, you know, do I want to be uh, become a telemarketer? No. <laughs> so what's the, being a speaker, what's the best speech you've ever witnessed in your life? Best speech. You know, the, the crowd that I come out of, Joe, is primarily in the Internet and information marketing spaces. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's a lot of how to make money talks and all that and motivational things. You know, the best speaker, I probably heard it because I just thought his, his whole approach and demeanor was brilliant. Is a guy named Dan Kennedy, well-known information marketing guy. I mean, he had no, 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 no bullshit. This is the way, this is the way it is. These are the types of things you need to do. And I appreciated the straight and, and honest approach to things. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say Dan Kennedy. So who's been a hero for you in your life? Who's been a hero for me? You know, I have some business colleagues that I certainly admire greatly for what they've accomplished and, and the fact that 
they practice what they preach. But uh, at the top of the list would probably be a guy named Armin Moore. Now, you've probably never heard of Armin. Armin's an internet marketing guy. Uh, but he does coaching on the internet marketing, but he never coaches anything that he hasn't done or tried himself. So it's not a, a, lot, a lot of BS and, you know, this might work or whatever. It's things he's done. And he's just very laid back, down to earth. So if, if you're interested in internet marketing, check out a guy named Armin Morin. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now that you admire, that you find inspirational, who would it be? Who would you love to meet and talk to? Pope. Okay. That's a good one. What would you ask him? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm an admitted Catholic by conversion, and there's still always still a lot of questions in the mind about why this happens or this doesn't happen. You know, I, I still struggle with the question, why do you know bad things happen to good people or whatever? So a lot of it's still a mystery, and I you know I just would like some. I don't know whether it's motivation or positive reinforcement about the good of the church and why things are the way they are and what can we do overall to make this world a better place i mean i do a lot of charity work joe and you know i always tell people that if you're feeling down the best thing you can do to feel better is go help somebody else yeah well said so what is your motivation every day what gets you out of bed what gets you to be who you are to help motivate people as well what how's that work for you well, about a year ago, Joe, the company that I founded that I mentioned, Speaker Fulfillment Services, for various reasons, even though I was the face of the company, I didn't technically have the ownership of the company. I had a business partner, and he technically had ownership, and he decided he wanted to get out of the business world, so he sold the company to an employee. And about a year ago, that employee decided they no longer wished me to be the face of the company. So in essence, I got fired by the company that I helped to found. So it, it was a, a, a reawakening. So, okay, Brett, what do you really want to do now? Because, you know, even though I just turned 65 last year, the thought of getting up every morning and saying, all right, what the hell am I going to do today just didn't sound very appealing to me. And so I decided, you know, Brett, what would you really like to do? And that is, you know, take the things that I've learned over my 25 years in the speaking industry and help some people along the path. So... My my motivation now is, you know, I started the podcast that I mentioned, Spotlight on Speaking, which focuses on helping aspiring speakers. And it's just about, you know, giving back to that industry and hoping, helping to further some people's journey so that they don't make some of the stupid mistakes that I've seen other speakers make in the last few years. So, Right on. What, what it, what, what's been one of your best success stories? Somebody that you helped that was really magnanimous that puts a smile on your face. You know, recently I actually helped a guy craft his TEDx talk. And yeah. so, I mean, he had a draft or whatever, and we went through it. I made him practice it for me and all that. And then he went and delivered a wham, bam, TEDx talk. So it was just, you know, it was extremely satisfying to see his success and know that I had contributed to that in some small way. I mean, it was his words and all that, but the fact that I was able to help him polish it and make it a better presentation for that particular platform felt very good so as a writer what was the first book you read when you were a kid that really like the light bulbs went on and you either said i want to read as much as i can or i want to write someday you know i'm sure i was brought up on all the dr seuss books and all that stuff uh you know favorite book is i when i was a kid probably go to all go i mean i love reading that one to my kids uh and i was always big into the hardy boys so i i you know i if i read these days I certainly read business books, but aside from that, it tends to be, you know, thrillers, you know, Grisham's or Clancy's or, or things like that. So that's the genre I typically follow. But, you know, in terms of being a young reader, I read a lot of Hardy Boys. Nice. So <laughs> let's stay in that young frame of mind. If you have a dream tonight, you run into the like 20 year old version of you and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained in your life up to this point. What advice would you give your young version? A couple of things, Joe. Number one is you've got to not be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. Even though it's not comfortable, it will hold you back from so many things if you're unwilling to try different things. I mean, 
I was happy being the back of the room guy for many, many years in the speaking industry because I'm kind of a natural introvert. And the thought of getting up in front of people and speaking was just like, nah, that ain't me. I'll stay in the back here and, and do my shtick or whatever. No, but eventually about oh, 10 years ago or so, I decided, you know, Brett, it's time for you to get up in front of the room and, and get over that particular fear. And so I did that. And it's something I should have done long ago. So number one is don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. Number two is you've got to remember that, you're, in my opinion, your most important business asset, personal asset too, but business asset is relationships. And you've got to learn how to nurture relationships properly. And you've definitely got to approach it from a what can I do for them first approach versus what what can they do for me? And if they can't do something for me right now, then forget them. Yeah. But nurture those relationships because they will do far more for you than any physical property you have. You're building your website, whatever. It's relationships are the key. So of all of the things that you've done and become and overcome and evolved into, what are you the proudest of? Well, number one, uh, being a good father and having three good kids who are, you know, well on their way in life. I mean, they're all in their 30s now, but, you know, they all graduated from college. They'd never been in jail. They'd never been a burden. So, you know, being a good father would be the number one. Uh, I mean, number two, I mean, the, the satisfaction that I was able to help build a couple organizations to become multi-million dollar organizations. I mean, there's a satisfaction there. Uh, the eight books that I've written, I mean, there's satisfaction there in, in terms of, you know, putting actually putting that pen to paper and producing things that will be a benefit to others. So, I mean, there's probably, those are three, but number one is being a good dad. I mean. Yeah. That's the cream, to, cream of the crop. So everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, all of your readers, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? You know, like a lot of people, Joe, there are still times in my life that I struggle with the imposter syndrome. And, you know, am I really the one best qualified to go out and help people do certain things? And it's like, you know, well, Brett, yes, you are. You just need to go out and do it or whatever. So, you know, you always have some self-doubt about certain things. And it's overcoming those doubts that are the key to moving things forward. Now, I don't know if I answered your question. So give me the question again, Joe. I may have more to say there. Just just who you think you are, because everyone has a perception, but your perception is the real vehicle that drives who you are. Yeah, I mean, my perception of myself is that I'm a pretty good person. I'm a good listener. Uh, I do a lot of charity work, so I... I Feel that that's something that everybody should do more of honestly is helping others out um you know i'm not as good as a, of a time manager as it should be <laughs> uh but all you know all in all i you know I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with where i'm in life and you know there's more to accomplish i mean the show doesn't end at 65 or whatever so keep plugging yeah. forward and doing doing things so so let's say we get off this Zoom call and a time machine pulls up in front of your house and you can go anywhere in time and see one event in human history. Where are you going? The Emancipation Proclamation. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So if anyone wants to pick up your eight books, learn more about you, reach out, hire you, how do they do that? All right, the best place to go is uh, my personal website, which is my name, brettridgeway.com, and that's Brett with one T and Ridgeway without an E. Uh, if they want to check out the podcast, it's at spotlightonspeaking.com. And then I'm all over social media, so LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever you can find me on all the platforms. Right on. Brett, thank you, sir. I appreciate your time today. I appreciate your story. This has been wonderful. Keep doing the good work. All right. Thanks so much, Joe. Have a great year. Take care. You too.